Okay, still working on this idea of church growth. I delved into the pastor, and this is what I found. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. So God created man in his own image. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Psalms. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. John, all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Matthew. And Jesus went up into a mountain and sat down there, and a great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And the disciples say unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus said unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they did eat were 4,000 men beside women and children. John, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. James, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, but wilt thou know that faith without works is dead? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Luke, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted into the sea, and it should obey you. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is. Acts. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Psalms. 
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people. And correlative passages from our textbook. Spiritually to understand that there is but one creator, God, unfolds all creation, confirms the scriptures, brings the sweet assurance of no parting, no pain, and of man deathless and perfect and eternal. As light destroys darkness and in the place of darkness all is light, so, in absolute science, soul or God is the only truth giver to man. Animal magnetism has no scientific foundation, for God governs all that is real, harmonious, and eternal, and his power is neither animal nor human. All we correctly know of spirit comes from God, divine principle, and is learned through Christ and Christian science. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace. Observation, invention, study, and original thought are expansive and should promote the growth of mortal mind out of itself, out of all that is mortal. We know that all will be changed in the twinkling of an eye when the last trump shall sound, but this last call of wisdom cannot come till mortals have already yielded to each lesser call in the growth of Christian character. We can, and ultimately shall, so rise as to avail ourselves in every direction of the supremacy of truth over error, life over death, and good over evil. And this growth will go on until we arrive at the fullness of God's idea. Christian science presents unfoldment, not accretion. It manifests no material growth from molecule to mind, but an impartation of the divine mind to man and the universe. Church, the structure of truth and love, whatever rests upon and proceeds from divine principle. The church is that institution which affords proof of its utility and is found elevating the race, rousing the dormant understanding from material beliefs to the apprehension of spiritual ideas and the demonstration of divine science, thereby casting out devils or error and healing the sick. Our church is built on the divine principle, love. We can unite with this church only as we are newborn of spirit, as we reach the life which is truth and the truth which is life by bringing forth the fruits of love, casting out error and healing the sick. While respecting all that is good in the church or out of it, one's consecration to Christ is more on the ground of demonstration than of profession. Jesus established his church and maintained his mission on a spiritual foundation of Christ healing. Creation is ever appearing and must ever continue to appear from the nature of its inexhaustible source. The days of our pilgrimage will multiply instead of diminish when God's kingdom comes on earth. Christ, God's idea, will eventually rule all nations and peoples, imperatively, absolutely, finally. Thank mm -hmm. you.